Well, praise the Lord to all of you today. It is a joy to sit with you and share the riches of the word of God. Being a Christian today is not a dull activity. Believe me, we have so many attempts by the enemy to pull us away from intimacy with Christ. But we believe that our God is able to keep what you commit into his hands. So if you commit yourself to him, God will keep you. Jesus said, no one can pluck you out of the father's hand. So rest in the knowledge that you belong to God and welcome. And thanks for joining us here on the Christian and the culture. I'm Pastor Eric Lambert of Bethel Deliverance International Church, and joining me are Pastors Tim Baldwin and Brian Weatherspoon, and they want to greet you and welcome you to our broadcast as well. Christian in the Culture family, God bless you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you're here, and uh, let's jump in. As well, I want to welcome you all, and listen here. Move the coffee table out of the way. Let's get ready to have a good time. You're going to really enjoy today's topic. All right, now listen up very carefully. We live in a world where there doesn't seem to be any satisfaction. If you're married, you want to be single. If you're single, you want to be married. If you have a job, you want to be free from the job. If you don't have a job, you want money. Throughout our world, we are confronted by a spirit that causes us to walk around without being satisfied or content. Today, we want to talk to you about the power of contentment and how God wants you to live in contentment. And believe me, it is, it is, it's an extreme blessing to live in contentment. Mm. The Apostle Paul speaks to the church at Philippi, and he says, we must learn to be content. He speaks of himself, yeah. and he says, I've learned in whatsoever state I find myself, therefore, to be content. Yes. What's Paul saying? Well, our two Bible scholars are going to help you to understand <laughs> what it means to be content. And then we're going to evaluate Paul's teachings to Timothy because so many of us are on the wrong path. Now, don't get us wrong. We're not judging or demonizing anyone. Right. But the purpose of our program is to help you evaluate your current position in light of scriptural teaching. So we're going to start off with Paul's teachings to the church at Philippi, where he says, listen, I've learned to be humbled. I've yes. learned to be abased. Yes. I've learned to prosper. I've learned to be successful. He said, but I've learned that whatever condition I'm in, yeah. I've learned to be content. Gentlemen, when Paul says that, what do you think he's saying to the Christians? And is it a defeatist attitude? Mm. You know, I, I don't think it's a defeatist attitude at all. I think it's really an attitude of victory from this perspective. Um, when we talk about contentment, we talk about our ability to to navigate life, again, just as Paul was saying, in whatever mm -hmm. state that I'm in, right? Especially uh, because we're believers, we're in Christ. And that gives us the ability, that gives us the, the, the strength, whether it's to endure or whether it gives us the emotion to be, to be happy or victorious. It, it really means that I'm, I'm, I'm at peace with where I am in my life. And here's the other thing, here's, here's a, uh, something in opposition to that. Contentment is different from complacency. That's right. Paul is not saying I'm, I'm complacent, That's which right. means it's, there's this laziness That's about. Yeah. Paul is saying I'm, wherever I am, yeah, yeah. I'm at peace with, with where I am in my life, and I learn to navigate that. Yeah, that is okay. great. That is we're great. going to come back to that because you yeah. said some things we're not going to let you get away with. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Brian, your input? Very true. I think uh, contentment is a power seat. That's probably one of the most powerful places you could be as a believer because in both, you, you, you can't upset the apple cart. With the person who's content, whether the day is good, all right, we're fine. But even if the days and the times go bad, you still rest in the fact, key word is rest, you rest in the fact that God is good or whatever's gonna work out. The enemy's afraid of that kind of person. Mm. He's no, his best work is to bring fear, make you run, cause you to go in desperation. But when you learn that, I'm, that the, the secret of being content and resting in the Lord, the enemy can't shake you up. You become a very, very dangerous person in the kingdom of darkness. All right. Now, so often uh, uh, preachers love to throw out beautiful doctrines, <laughs> bring you great teachings of theology, and it leaves you <laughs> wondering what in the world do they mean by that? <laughs> Now, the Apostle Paul wasn't, you know, he wasn't trying to confuse us. But Pastor Tim says, you learn to be content. Yeah. 
All right, now that's standing there, that phrase is there with the coat on. I need you to take that coat off so that our <laughs> listeners will understand that learning to be content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's not something you hear a great yeah. deal of. Yeah. Uh, uh, the scripture says, uh, Jesus says in, in Matthew um, uh, Gospel, in, in uh, chapter 6, he talks about um, uh, being, uh, not worrying for anything. Mm -hmm. he, the, the phrase that, that, that's used is, says, take no thought for your life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, in other words, don't worry about um, your life, what's, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, those yeah. things. And, and we, we sometimes misuse or misinterpret when it gets down to Matthew 6, 33, mm -hmm. uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God, all of its righteousness, and yeah. all these things will be added. And so the key is, what are all these things? It's basic necessities. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not the big house on the hill mm -hmm. and the big car. Yeah. And so, so I'm saying all that to say that when we learn that God is in the business of taking care of our necessities, yeah. right? And that we, we don't have to worry about what is necessary for us to live, to thrive, and, and to just to, 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 to do life, yeah. then it, it puts us in a position where we can be at peace, yeah. okay. where, we can, where we can be content okay. with, if I don't get the house on the hill, I'm still good. Okay. If I don't get the fancy car, mm -hmm. I'm still good. And, and, and so again, when you mm. talk about uh, contentment, learn Learning to be content is, is really learning to to trust in the Lord. It's mm -hmm. learning to, to mm -hmm. lean in the Lord. And again, I know that's another theological phrase that we use. And people say, how do I do that? Right. It is learned behavior. It's learned behavior. Yeah. Charles Haddon Spurgeon says, the scripture in uh, Philippians that says, uh, cast your care on him mm -hmm. because he, he cares for you. Mm -hmm. He says it takes two hands, the hand of prayer and the hand of faith yeah. <laughs> to, to trust in God. Yeah. And so again, it, it really boils down to being able to trust the Lord, that God will provide your needs. And it's not necessarily God giving you excess, right. but God's going to take care of me. I'm going right. to, I'm going to be well. And so when, when, when we look at being content yeah. and that, in that way, we, we learn to trust God to provide mm. for us. Mm. Pastor Brian, the phrase, uh, he's learned to be content. Mm -hmm. Now, from a regular Western perspective, mm -hmm. when we see that verb, yeah. and it's, it's recommended in the past tense, yeah. am I taught to be content? Is it an active or a passive? Is mm. it the result of mm. learning to be content? You see the average Christian reads this and says, okay, yeah. Am I, am I being taught to be content or is it the result of me trusting God? How do you view that? Uh, I, I can tell you for certain in this culture, you are not taught to be content. Right. Everything around us says get more. Right. Yeah. You know, before you get the last car, you're already invested in the next right, one because right. that one's better. You know, there, there's a push to always chase the next thing. Uh, it's probably why our relationships and marriages are not even working out in America because no one's satisfied. There's this insatiable appetite that we have as Americans. So the culture will not teach you contentment. Depending on your upbringing, your parents may be a little bit more uh, down to earth who may kind of lend you a little understanding of appreciate what God gives you, you'll be all right. But as a believer, you must take on a very intentional move towards understanding that God is in control even when it doesn't look like it's favorable. And that is learned behavior. You must practice that, in fact. Mm -hmm. And I think some of it with Paul, like many of us, came and, and he kind of got it by a, kind of a, 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 as a result of kind experience, of mentality. Yeah. yeah, it's experience that got him there. Paul tells Timothy, just to connect with the scripture in Philipp Philippians 4, he tells Timothy that there are people who are void of truth they have corrupt minds and they teach that godliness is great gain. Yeah. And Paul says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Great gain. Now yes. he adds that extra mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how does one come to that place without a total trust in the sovereignty of God? Mm. Is it possible to come to contentment, to learn contentment, without having, as you call it, yes. to realize God is in control. I yes. mean, come on, we're Westerners. Nobody's in control. I'm the <laughs> captain of my ship. I'm the master of my faith. Yeah. How mm. do I give absolute control mm. to an invisible person when I'm taught to run my own life? Mm. 
Yeah, uh, it's 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 difficult. It, it, it really is difficult. Yeah. You know, if we're if we're going to be honest about it, because we are taught to control our own lives, and you know, th there's a word in in, in Christianity that, that we that we shy away from. It's submission. Yes, yeah. it, it's submission. And and in order for us to really mm. experience that that contentment, that godly contentment, it means that we got to submit. Yes. To the heart and the mm -hmm. will of the Lord. Mm -hmm. it sounds. It sounds easy enough, but we yeah. all recognize it's when I want to control my life. And here's one even better than that. Yeah. We want to control God. Yeah. And so, so, so it's, 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 yeah. it's difficult. It's doable, <laughs> but it's certainly difficult. And we have to learn what real submission looks like yeah. in order for us to really to, to, to travel to that place. Yeah, I, I don't think Westerners, we don't do it well. We don't really understand submission. Most of the time we're made to submit. You don't, you don't willfully walk into it until you've matured enough. And so most uh, Western believers have to be forced to it. And here's a great example that we all kind of went through is the pandemic. The pandemic taught you whether you were small or great, had money or no money, that whatever you had could easily be taken. Yes. Uh, whatever influence you had could have easily been pulled to a halt. And for the first time, I think, in all of our uh, kind of existence as pastors and spiritual leaders that we had to finally even wrestle within ourselves and go, what is this, right? Because that's, that was antithetical to the world that we're used to. We're able to go and come. Now somebody's telling us when we can leave the house. Uh, you shouldn't be on the road. Like all of those things were kind of an indicator that one, there could be moments where you're not in control. Two, there's moments that you're not in control and God is, and he doesn't always give you the playbook on what to do. So it left us to say, I guess we better trust God and, and be still and, and see what the will of the Lord is. But there's the difficulty. That is difficult. You know, you use the pandemic as, as a perfect example of the loss of control. Yes. And I support that. Yes. But how does the Christian respond? Yeah. You know, do we put our trust in the government to solve it? Mm -hmm. Or do we become non-participants and wait on the Lord to deal with it. Yeah. We're back to, That's do I take way. the vaccine? Do I not take the yeah, vaccine? Yeah. Based upon an accumulation of information from a secular world? Sure. Or do I inquire of the Lord yeah. like Hezekiah yep. and ask for his direction? Are yeah. we really taught how to trust God? I mean, really, let's, let's take all no. the feathers off. Are we no, really, and not. are we guilty at times? For not Absolutely. teaching trust in Absolutely. God. Absolutely. I, I, think, I think we peruse it sometimes. Yes. You know? yes. we, we pass by <laughs> it at I times. Can, I can and, and I know we all on some, on, on, at some time or another have taught it. Yeah. But what, it, what would it look like if we, if we taught it more consistently? Yes. Absolutely. You know, because yeah. again, you, you, you talk about the things like the, the pandemic. That was such like an amazing season of yeah. learning to trust God. Yes. To trust God. You know, and, and like Paul, mm -hmm. We had to do it by experience yes. because there was fear, because there was so much death so much, and so yeah. much uncertainty. It was like, OK, God, we're, we all we can do yeah. is trust you. I mean, even yeah. the news stations were were, <laughs> were were putting up Bible scriptures. Yeah, and, yeah. and but but here we are back on the other side of yep. what seems to be normal. Right. And we've lost that. And whole, we're right back. We're to right back to, yep, yeah. to, to trusting in ourselves yes. and trying to control God and control our own lives. Which, you know, I'm going to say something that no one wants to hear. <laughs> right. It is more likely that we're gonna go through something else. That's gonna more than likely force us, Lord willing, we've learned from the last one, uh, gonna force us again to trust in God. It's almost like God is saying, oh, I'm gonna get you all to a place where you're gonna finally surrender that will and give it over to me. Just completely. his children. Just his children. So we then mm -hmm. become the recipients of yes. worldwide issues just <laughs> to get us out of the world. I think so. I think. Because we are assimilated, there's no way for God to do certain things and we not get the feeling or be touched. Uh, the difference will be how we respond. And so I believe our response should be on the upward. We're learning to trust, depend on God. But it doesn't mean that we won't get touched by exactly what's going on. God's got to separate us some kind of way. Before the Lord comes, there's going to be a separation. But there's a stigma that we put into the body of Christ that says, if you're going through hellish situations and difficult times, 
you must ascend. It, it's like the Job oh, yeah, the uh, Job complex. Yeah. Yeah. You know, here comes, as long as Job is dealing with the devil, he's okay. Yeah. You know, yeah, the yeah. Lord gives, the Lord <laughs> takes away. If we suffer good at God's hand. But then his friends come. Yeah, the evaluations friends. from your peers yeah. causes you now to despise what God is doing. It's true. Yeah. So at the beginning wow. of the pandemic, the cry was, this is judgment from God. Yeah. Right. Right. And it's not judgment from God because it can't no. be solved by a vaccine if That's it's right. God's judgment. It's a judgment right. And a pill won't fix it. That's right. And so God doesn't just sit around and issue judgment in no. a helter skelter fashion. No. Yeah. It's for a time and a purpose. Is he's not judging the world yet? Yes. Because yes. that judgment is fixed. Yeah, that's exactly so right. Paul tells us we should learn to be content. Yeah. How do we walk in contentment in the time of the trouble that you say is yeah, coming? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a gear up spiritually. And, and all of this ties back into where we are spiritually. Some of it proves the fact that we're not as spiritual as we say we are. Mm. And I think the time will begin to help produce in us that, if you will, that peaceable fruit of righteousness. So be, because we understand more and more, yeah, I'm going to pray for things that I'm not going to get. I'm, I'm going to pray for, real, for things that I want that may not be the will of God. And as a believer, and this is where we have to teach it more, sometimes we have to understand God is Father enough to say yes or no to certain things that we're asking for. And if he says no, it's okay to wait and trust and know that it's for your best interest. That has to be explained more, has to be talked about more and demonstrated. Now, Paul tells Timothy, Pastor Tim, Paul says, people in 1 Timothy 6, 9, people who want to get rich fall into temptation and, and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. People who want to get rich. How do we deal with that in today's time of people who, who push the prosperity doctrine saying that getting rich is our birthright, where Paul's basically saying don't do it. Yeah, well, it's really not scripture. It's not scripture. I do believe the Lord wants us to be blessed. Sure. I believe in all of those sure. things. But but the, the basis of that teaching is hellish mm -hmm. because Christ didn't die for us to, to get money yeah, and right. to chase oh, money right. and, to, and to love riches, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and again, when you look at that, Paul is really saying they fall into to, to trouble and issues into temptation because they do whatever they can yeah. to get it. Yeah. It's the motive behind sure. getting the riches. Yeah, sure it it's the heart behind yeah. getting the riches. Yeah. And if my heart is just getting riches, doesn't matter who I hurt, doesn't matter what I do, yeah. doesn't matter my, my attitude behind it, the only goal is to acquire That's riches. Right. Yeah. And I think there's a scripture in Proverbs that says the man that chases money he never finds it, <laughs> right? So, so there's a part of you that if you if you're only chasing that, you're not going to come to a place of what we deem as fulfillment. You'll yeah. only seek to have to try to get more of it because you're trying to make that fill a void. But Solomon c creates a problem when he says <laughs> money is a defense and it answers uh, all things. Yeah, 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 it does. So it almost suggests then you need to go after it. Yeah. So, but we look at Solomon's life at the end. Though. <laughs> yes. So if you if you if you read his, rich. A, very yeah, a rich if, miserable man. Yeah. If you read through <laughs> through his life and see and see the outcome of his life yeah. again. When it, it, it's, it's so crazy because even in the Old Testament, I believe it's in, in Leviticus, Deuteronomy or Leviticus, the king's law. Mm -hmm. We're in the king's law. Mm -hmm. The kings were required to write this law out. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. one of the things it talked about was amassing riches, right. amassing horses and, right. and, 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 and right. chariots. Yeah, and, and they all did it. And here's why. Here's why it was a, the king's law, because God knew that if you had all of these things, you would trust in them more than you would trust there in them. There you go. Right. Horses and chariots, we know that's the instrument for war. Yes, it is. So when war comes and you don't have them, yep. you have to trust in me now. Yeah. Well, well, that's that, contentment. Isn't that the scripture? Some trust in horses. Yes. And chariots. And yep. chariots, but I will trust in the Lord. And we're there where we do trust in our ability to have resources. Uh, we're Americans. We we kind of we don't even realize there's things we don't even have to pray about. We can just go get a pill for it. Yeah. There are parts of the world that they cannot do that. Yeah. We can jump in our car and go where we want. There are places in the world where even in the whole community there's not one but one vehicle. Yeah. Some of our houses have two or three. Wow. Technically, we are rich in our culture, and so we have the daunting task of telling people who are technically overly resourced that you should trust God. 
trust them when? Here's where we leave off. The part where you can only trust them is when you lose. Mm -hmm. Because technically we've already won. Mm -hmm. So the only way we will feel it is when we feel a loss. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it's the only thing I can tell Many you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. <laughs> oh, and, and we do have the responsibility to uh, demonstrate trust in God. Absolutely. And Paul goes on to conclude in that teaching with Timothy. He says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. And we see that today. Sure yeah. we do. Sure he we said do. people go after it, they fall into a snare. Swan yeah. into a snare. And how does God disengage his children from that mm. when we're surrounded by the accumulation of yeah. it? And now it's become part of the doctrine of his church. Yeah, wow. You know, get more, get more, get yeah. more. Get, even yeah. the, the term seed faith, which was yeah. started by a, a renowned evangelist several years ago. It's yeah. not a biblical concept, right. Right. but it has become the measuring rod for everything. Yeah. I'm going to sow my seed. And it's yeah. selfish driven. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. And so here we are content with our salvation alone, mm. but not content with the sovereignty mm. of God. Mm. We have to get back to the sovereignty, sovereignty. of God. I, I think we use that term loosely. Yes. We yeah, don't I, understand. Yeah, I don't think we yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's we're, like, afraid of it. we're, yeah. we're afraid of we're it. We're afraid yeah. of it. Because yes, it's the absencing of you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. John the Baptist, he must increase, I must decrease. Yes. Here comes Jesus. I only do what I see the Father doing. Can you imagine wow. the enormity of wow. that statement? That is enormous. That's what right. you see me doing is what the Father tells me to do. How right. many of us can make that statement? Oh. I can't. Yeah, Man. no, I can't. I do a lot of stuff on <laughs> yeah. my own I like that think I so. think is right. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we, we try to make it. But anyway, well, praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> we want you to be content. Oh, now man. work at it. Yes. Work at it. Paul said, I've learned to be content. Here's yes. how you start. Number one, you assess where you are and you realize this one truth. I am exactly where God wants me to be. Yes. Satan does Amen. not have more power than God. You are exactly where God wants you to be. You to be. So look at it from mm. a position of victory, not a position of defeat. I am where God wants me and he will not allow anything to come to you that he will not lead you through. Yes. If you're in a fiery furnace, he might not keep you from the furnace, but by gosh, he will be in the fire with you. Hallelujah. So I need you to change your attitude and just rest in the Lord. He has everything under control. You might not see it, but I remember as a child, when my parents and my older relatives were all together in the living room talking and I would walk in, they would stop talking and say, get out of grown folks business. That's right. And what they were saying was, you don't need to hear this conversation yeah. because your mind can't process it. Yeah. You need to relax. Stop worrying about things that God is already taking control over. Stop worrying about things that you can't control. Or as my dear friend, Pastor Clement Lupton says, stop paying tolls for bridges you haven't crossed. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Stop Amen. worrying. Learn to be content. You are exactly where God wants you to be. Yeah. Now, you might have to make some changes in your lifestyle to get your health under control. Sure. Yeah, I don't want you to be content with high cholesterol. No. I don't want you to be content with an elevated A1C and no. bad diabetic uh, uh, results. You're not content with that, but no. be content in your healing. Yes. yes. Rest in the fact that God has a pathway for you. Yes. It may be reducing your uh, cholesterol, reducing your carbohydrate intake, yes. changing your lifestyle, getting up every day and walking one mile, whatever it takes. You're not content with bad health, with bad nor health. should you be content with poverty. Yes. You get up and you determine, I'm not going to live like this. This is not the way God wants me to live. But always remember, God will give you what you need. And it's a simple theological fact. That's right. If you have it, you need it. If you don't have it, you don't need it. You don't it. need it. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, yes. Solomon says, and don't lean to your own understanding. Yes. You don't have to make sense of God. Yeah. Remember, no politician can save you. No political party can help us. No. America will never be great again until Jesus is on the throne yes. of America. No Democratic Party, no Republican Party will ever make America great again. That is correct. America was only great when God was on the throne Hallelujah. of America. Yes. That means he has to be in every phase of our life, family, work, school, everywhere. Yes. You put him back in charge, America will be great. 
God bless you and thanks for joining The Christian and the Culture, and we'll see you next time. The Christian and the Culture is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. Do you find yourself running out of things to say when in prayer? Are you unsure about what to pray for or whether God even hears your prayers? In his new teaching series, Lord, Teach Us to Pray, Bishop Lambert provides a detailed path through scripture of how to enter the presence of God and how to learn God's will and way for all situations. What was the basis of prayer? To bring you in compliance with the word of God and the will of God. Two things were necessary, communication with the author and a renewed mind to see it from his perspective. For your donation of $35 or more, you can receive the Lord Teach Us to Pray five-part DVD series and begin your journey toward a more fruitful prayer life. Call 1-800-550-3284 or visit ericlambertministries.org to order your copy today. Bishop Eric A. Lambert Jr. is committed to influencing our culture with Christ. In his book, The Christian and the Culture, Bishop Lambert explores practical ways to avoid becoming ensnared by the trends of today's culture. Order your copy of The Christian and the Culture and achieve daily victorious living. Visit ericlambertministries.org to purchase the book and discover more resources that will enrich your Christian walk. The Bethel Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.